Hey guys, today I want to take you behind the scenes of our mini May photo shoot with three kids and an ice cream shop. I want some ice cream. I want some ice cream. Hey guys, welcome. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia Yarns. We are a hand-dyed knitting yarn company based in Vancouver in Canada. And this is Taking Back Friday. This is where we come every Friday and we talk about knitting and spinning and weaving and dyeing. Today, specifically, I want to talk to you about the new knitwear design collection that we've come out with this past week. Now, today's episode is going to be a little bit uh, different from usual episodes. Um, and that is because what we're going to do is I'd like to talk to you guys and show you some of the samples of the cute little sweaters and things like that that we've got in the collection. But I want to do it together with Tabitha. Now, you guys may or may not know that Tabitha is our knitwear design director at Sweet Georgia. She does not live in Vancouver. She lives like basically across the continent. She lives uh, in Tennessee. And uh, for us to get together, anytime. We basically have to get together online and we have uh, video chats and we do that for meetings and all sorts of things like that. It's only like once or twice a year that Tabitha and uh, the rest of the Sweet Georgia team that we get to see each other in person. So those times are very, very special. But for the most of the year, we just have to go back and forth uh, online. And so today what I wanted to do was I wanted to bring Tabitha online and we were going to have a little conversation. We can go through the different pieces that we've got in the collection. These are all designed by Tabitha. And so I really wanted her to have the opportunity to share with you guys what she's been doing, what she's up to, and what her thinking process was behind all of these patterns. And meanwhile, I'll show you a little bit of the chaos and the craziness that happened behind the scenes as well during our photo shoot. Yeah, let's get to it. Stinky. Hey. Nina, put your hand around Russell. Put your hand around Russell. There you go. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Okay, and then Michaela. Nothing, nothing. Michaela, you want to sit in between both, or okay, maybe nothing. sit beside Nina. Sit beside Nina. Mm. Okay, three of you, smile in here, okay? One, two, three. Aww. Okay, and. Okay, good. Okay, Russell, are you ready? Russell, your turn. You don't need the back, do Because it's kind of the same. Okay, one, two, three. When did you learn Tell how to do that? Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. One, two, three. This is. Hey guys, so welcome. <laughs> welcome. So uh, if you guys have never met Tabitha before, this is Tabitha. Um, in the past, uh, we have done a couple of these kinds of conversations before, like we see each other on video, but then we only post the audio for whatever reason. We yeah. have never posted the video for, for these kinds of chats and conversations. So um, I wanted you guys to have a chance to see Tabitha in real life. And um, yeah, if you if you uh, don't know Tabitha Hedrick, she is our design director at Sweet Georgia. She sort of collates and coordinates all of our um, knitwear design submissions and sees through the entire process of you know working with designers working with tech editors working with sample knitters working with test knitters like doing the whole thing anything to do with patterns basically <laughs> goes through tabitha and then on top of that she also likes to design herself and so the mini may collection tell us a little bit about why the mini may collection in general came about like what is this all about I don't know. It's not like I do enough things, apparently. So I felt like I had to fill in this lull. <laughs> and so I just decided one year because I was inspired by tea. Our first mini make collection was the high tea collection. And I just wanted to do something that incorporated all of these things that we loved about tea. Uh, and it became a little mini four piece collection. And I decided to do it the following year. And, and then I decided to do it the following year. No, I found it was kind of, um, it was kind of because I, I thought it was because like you're coordinating a lot of designs from other designers and everything like that. Yeah. And, um, you didn't necessarily always have the chance to do that much designing yourself. And so to have like the mini made collection be just only patterns that were designed by Tabitha made for a more cohesive collection. Like this is, this is your baby. This is your thing. Yeah, 
yeah, it was that little window of opportunity where I could just really hone in on a particular theme myself and put all the colors together myself and try all the things myself. Because there's all of these things I always want to try and never really have the opportunity to just because we have to fit it within the scheme and scope of other designers and other collections and other things going on. So that, it really is kind of like my little baby. <laughs> So tell us about this little baby. So this month, mini May, the theme is, tell us all about it. Confections. <laughs> have you ever been in an ice cream shop with your kids? I'm sure you have. You just were. Well, actually, you know what? We did not until we had to do this photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> but I take, we, my husband is a big kid. So probably what I'm describing is what he does, but my children do it as well. They learned it from him, but they push their noses against the glass and they just look down into all of those buckets of ice cream colors and they are their own specific palette of colors. It doesn't matter what flavor you get. They're always going to be that wonderfully muted, sometimes bright, but mostly pastel -y. you know, a little bright punches here and there with your cherries on top or your sprinkles, but just that image of them staring down, uh, their tongue sticking out as they're trying to decide which flavor they want to sample first. That was the image that went into this collection. Oh my gosh, look at how many there are. So we actually shot these pieces in the collection at a local uh, ice cream shop here. It's like one of the older ice cream shops. I know that there's like new, more hipster um, ice cream shops, like artisan hipster ice cream shops. But this is kind of like an original artisan handmade ice cream place. And it's called La Casa Gelato. It's kind of on east, east side of Vancouver. And they have something like 200 or 300 flavors. But they have all sorts of like wacky flavors like, you know, fig and goat cheese. They do oh. like basil. Um, they they have like a curry flavor. They oh. have a bunch of um, like durian fruit. Uh, just like oh. all sorts of crazy things. So next time you come to Vancouver, if it's not winter, or maybe if it's winter, we could, we could still go. <laughs> <laughs> we have to add that to the list. For yeah, sure. we have to add that to the list. We'll do that. One of my earliest experiences as a kid here in the States is we used to have these old mom and pop, that's what we call them, uh, drugstores. And at the back of our local drugstore was the little ice cream shop. And it was the little bar stools and the little cases of ice cream. So you'd go and you'd pick up your prescription for poison ivy cream. <laughs> um, <laughs> back there and soothe the woes of a little bit of ice cream. I still remember that to this day, going back there. It was always the same guy, uh, you know, the son of the uh, pharmacy's owner. And it just was just such a laid back, simple experience. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the inspiration behind these pieces. I didn't actually even count the pieces. I have all the pieces in front of me on my desk. I'm wearing one of the pieces. Yes. Which one do you want to talk about first? We'll talk about that one. That's easy. There are four designs, but it looks like a lot of pieces in the collection because we size or I sized um, everything from little bitty baby to big, big kid, like my husband. <laughs> so it, everything in there is sized for the whole family. And so we had samples knit up in adult size for our models and then some other colors knit up in our kid size for those models. And I'm telling you guys, the photos in this collection with Michaela and Russell and Nina, our kid models who are um, Felicia's and Teresa's kiddos, are so unbelievably adorable. <laughs> I had the hardest time. Our photographer, Josh, he takes a ton of pictures and then we narrow them down to the ones that we need in the collection. And it was incredibly hard not to pick all of them. <laughs> <laughs> we got the ice cream on this one, so I had to wash it. <laughs> so you're wearing the cream and sugar pullover. It's a circular top-down um, pullover, circular yoke pattern. And it's one of my first, not my first, but one of my first forays into color work design on the yoke. And I just was so excited to be able to really dig in with that and work on the sizing for so many different ages with that. And then the colors, oh, 
I just love how they come together. They're really cute. They're super cute. So this yarn is actually the new yarn that we are doing for spring called the Flax and Silk DK. So, I mean, we call it a DK weight, but it's a quite a heavy DK. It works up almost like a worsted weight. Um, I feel like those names are so arbitrary, like DK <laughs> and worsted. And they're just so, they're so random. They cover quite a large range. So it depends on, you know, how you knit. It depends on what your gauge is, depends on what kind of fabric you like, but it basically works up into like almost a, almost a worsted weight sort of thing. So it knits up super, it. super fast. And we did it at a little bit of a looser gauge to accommodate for that. And, but I've always said that too, like DK fingering worsted, that all of those are always just starting spots to give you an idea of where to go with the needles to start mm -hmm. out. You, of course, learn your, you know, learn your style and gauge as the years progress but we um we use the flax and silk dk for that and it is not typically used when you have a silk and linen blend it's not often used for color work but it worked out really really well it shows the colors really well and it just feels like a dream against the skin yeah it is very soft very silky so now one of the things that we had talked about um i talked about this in the the modern color work class that we did for the school of sweet georgia earlier is that you can do color work with things that are non-wool you know things that are cellulose you want to do cotton um there's there's you can absolutely do color work with cellulose yarns the only thing is is because they don't have the elasticity that wool does your stitches may not look perfect like you know after you wash it and block it everything kind of evens out and then all the stitches kind of even out and look really really nice well with a cellulose sort of blend, it doesn't really necessarily even out. So there might be a little bit more irregularities, but I don't think that that is um, in any way bad in this no, case. I mean, it just I don't think so feels either. very rustic and, 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 and there's something kind of bubbly about the whole thing, but not, I mean, yeah, it, it blocks out smooth and everything, but I, I don't know. Like, I, I like it. I no, like no, that I, it's got a little I, bit of irregularity rustic feel like you talked about rustic softer more muted not irregular but not like perfect you know? yeah so yeah. I really I really enjoyed working with color work in that yarn um for Felicia we did two versions she's wearing custard as the main body and starlight as the accent color and then for her son we did starlight for the body and custard for the accent color so could you actually get the yarn and make both of the sweaters uh would that fit in the number of skeins um i'm looking probably you might have enough mm, i'm not sure I don't, it depends on the, I guess it depends on what size child version you'd make, but probably, I don't know. The child's version takes about one full skein of yarn, one to two full skeins of yarn for the body. Oh yeah. But for the white part, for the lighter oh, part. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, totally. I think, yeah. If I recall from my notes, the adults use probably half to a full skein for the, for the color. color. And then the kids use maybe, I think it was like a quarter to a half. Yeah. So there's like yarn left over from each one of these and you could just kind of mix Boom. the two. Cool. Now there's another sweater pattern in this collection. And this one was modeled by uh, Teresa and her daughter, Michaela. Tell yeah, us about that's this. That's called Praline. And it is just a simple, easy raglan button up cardigan. Uh, it has texture at the cuffs and the hemline, um, texture that kind of reminds me of an ice cream cone. <laughs> that's why, uh, that's why it, I chose that stitch pattern for this particular collection. It's really, it's such a great beginner basic cardigan pattern, I think. Yeah, it feels good. Really get, ready to get into the sweater. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Could be like a first ever, a first ever cardigan, top down cardigan. Yeah. Oh, so it's, this one it's, is the one for the kid wow. size. Mm -hmm. This is the grown-up size one. And that's knit in, we used rose gold for the adult size, and then we used um, summer skin for the child size version. Mm -hmm. Woo! <laughs> and I love, that, I love that Teresa sewed on the butterfly buttons. Yeah, the butterfly buttons on, on this one are so cute. So cute. 
Let's see. These ones. They're adorable. They're so Little cute. butterflies. <laughs> and that's worked in our superwash DK. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have the, the wool back here again, but still a light DK version that's really easy to wear year round. It's very comfortable looking. I might switch to wearing this in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a whole bunch of other things here. Let me let me um let me pull them out. Oh, the, this is another one, but it's a baby size one. Oh yeah, I forget how many samples we had. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh hey, there's another sweater here. <laughs> yeah, but this is even smaller than the size that Michaela wore. This is like a little baby one. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't big enough for Michaela because we measured her wrong, so that's why we had to nip the oh. <laughs> That's adorable. It is so cute. Fun. I wonder if it'll fit Nina. We'll have to try. We'll have to see it. And then we have um, some... Which one do you want to do first? I was going to say, we have a big collection of hats and scarves. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, that you guys wore. And so again, the hats and scarves are all sized for the whole family. And they are um, really, to me, really good ways to start on color work. Um, they're worked in our superwash worsted. So you can right now, not that one. That's from spring or fall. That's from fall. <gasps> Whoops, sorry. <laughs> hey, the colors don't really look like they're supposed to be in here, but it was in the box. <laughs> Sneak premium. What was I saying? <clears throat> It's a good way to start color work. Yes. You've never done color work before. Hats, hats and scarves, especially hats, are a really nice, easy, small palette for you to begin color work practice on, uh, especially when it's worked in our superwash worsted like these are. Then you have that nice elasticity to help you out. It's really sprungy. It's really bouncy. Big stitches, easy to yep. do. Easy to do. The scarf length is totally adjustable because um, you're only working the color work on the ends. So once you get going, then you just keep going until you basically run out of yarn. Right. So is it like one skein of one color and one skein of the other color? Yeah. yeah. And that's we just flipped it. So. Yeah. so there's like a pair like this. Yeah. And then there's a pair here. Yes. So one skein of the custard and one yep. skein of moon face. Mash them together and you get a hat and a scarf and set. Scarf. Yep. Actually, if you start now, you can make Christmas presents. I know, that's the, that <laughs> is what everybody needs to think about. I was just writing a paragraph the other day about how don't be like Tabitha and wait until the last minute. Start those oh. <laughs> just now. I'm always yeah. like December 15th. What can I make for people? <laughs> I know. But that's what happened last year. And I whipped out those three cows and made made a little teeny tiny little Christmas bundle for it. But what <laughs> you just showed was knit in uh, rose gold and starlight. So oh, yeah, God. it's such a great, these small accessories like this lets you learn a new skill on a teeny tiny palette and then also play with color like crazy. And have fun with it. Now... Now, one thing is that you would probably have to learn how to do color work flat, back and forth. Yep. We might need to do a little tutorial about that. We should. But that way, one, one pattern, two chances to learn two new techniques. Yeah. Then you'll be like the master. If you can That's do, right. you know, color work flat. Yeah. It's pretty genius. This and color really work good. flat to me is no, not really any different than in the round. You're just working with yarns at each end. <laughs> we can do a tutorial on that. <laughs> and, and then that's my last... favorite. Sorry? That's my favorite. My last one. I, I don't know why, I just love this blanket. I wish I had babies to wrap it up in. Mm. Oh, but it's a log cabin style blanket. Worked in four schemes of superwash DK. So it's... Um, and then it, we use a slightly larger needle, so it still knits up really quickly, gives it really nice drape. It's pretty much easy garter stitch. You can wear it as a shawl. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Why not? Oh, uh, that looks so cool with 
the lines like that. Oh, yeah, sure. you could totally knit it as a as a square shawl and wear it as a shawl if you don't want to wear it, if you don't want to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. And those, those, I had all of the color chips laid in front of me. And I just, it took me about 15 minutes to find what I think, I think it's the perfect combo of colors. Right. I had a lot of fun with that one. So four, four skeins, four colors. You could pick whatever colors you want. You could do like more muted ones. You could do neutral ones. I could see this in like a whole bunch of grays with a pop of yellow. I could see it in, you know, a bunch of pastels. This one happens to be a little bit more high contrast because we've got sort of like a deep red together with this is the rose gold and there's like a minty color. And a pumpkin color. It could be whatever you want it to be. I'm even thinking... I don't know how much yardage is in here, but like if you were to do a couple of party of five mini skeins and change colors every time you do a strip. Yeah, maybe. Let me um, see. Well, it's four skeins of the uh, DK. So that's about a thousand yards ish, give or take. Yeah. So that's like two party of fives, yeah. two party fives, maybe like two or three skeins of sock yarn, you could use slightly different needle size, slightly smaller needle size. I would go up in that needle size so you have a real nice, loose drape mm -hmm. with the fingering weight and you wouldn't even need another skein of sock yarn. Yeah. yeah. I like that idea. We, I, we should test that out. I think I have some party of fives floating around in my closet. <laughs> nice square shawl. You know? <laughs> I know, I love that. Or even if you don't have a baby, you can have it as a lap blanket. And, yeah, oh, that's know. what I do. I knit little lap blankets for and myself. And watch TV with this. Mm -hmm. Yep, I put it on the back of the couch. My husband, who falls asleep on the couch almost every single night, curls up on one of the blankets because he's a big baby. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Fantastic. So thank you so much for these pieces. It's so, so lovely. I love this whole collection. They're so cute all together. All the colors are so cute together. And yeah, well done. The models, the models are what make it work. Those cute kids. I'm telling you, I wish I could show everybody all of the pictures. We have ones with Russell choking himself with the scarf <laughs> and twirling and dancing around. I just, I loved it. Loved it. Great, thank you so much for this. Yay, thank you. So I hope that that was interesting to you guys. I hope that you saw something that you might like. These are all patterns that have been done in the new colors, the new colors for spring and for summer. They're all really light and grapefruity, sorbet kind of ice creamy kind of colors. And it was just super, super fun to do this photo shoot together with Teresa and her daughter Michaela and with my kids, Russell and Nina. So I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing some of that, hearing from Tabitha about the different pieces. It was very exciting for my kids to go to this ice cream shop. They've never actually been to an ice cream shop. It's not like they've never had ice cream before. I mean, we're not, <laughs> we're not mean parents like that, but no, they, they have had ice cream before, but they've never actually been to an ice cream shop where they got to pick and choose their own flavors, where they get to see everything. So it was very exciting for them. And of course they had a ton of energy afterwards and, and bedtime was <laughs> a little bit later than normal. But otherwise, it was a super fun day. It was a super fun event to do. And I hope that you guys enjoy some of the pieces that have come out of this entire project. Thank you guys so much for being here. Now, if you like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe and you'll get notified when new videos like this go up. Now, before you go, what I'd like to do is to do a little giveaway for one of these patterns from the collection, whichever one strikes your fancy, if you would like to join the giveaway for one of the pattern PDFs, please do follow the link that's gonna be down below in the description. Just follow that link and you can head on over to our website and enter your information there. And we'll do a draw in a couple of weeks and you'll get to pick whichever PDF pattern you most like. Thank you guys so much for watching today and I will see you in the next one.